Hello and welcome to the Bonsai Garden and I've just spent a fantastic day in the company of Xavier Martinez of Expressions of Grace Bonsai and if you haven't checked out his YouTube channel yet then I'll put a link down in the description below, do check it out, enjoy. Hello and welcome and I'm today in Xavier Martinez's Bonsai Garden. I'll just say hello. <laughs> I can say hello. I've just been stuffed with a great big lunch courtesy of Jason, so I'll say anything he wants me to say. Yeah, it's going to be a slow afternoon. <laughs> but uh, whilst I'm here, we're going to do a number of different things. And one of those things is we're going to do a critique of a number of trees that I've brought with me. Here's the first tree. I always think it's interesting that every bonsai enthusiast will have a different view or opinion as to how they might style different trees. So the whole idea of this exercise is to compare and contrast how Xavier might deal with these particular four trees and their issues and see how I would deal with that and see what the differences are and where we have a consensus. So this particular tree, it's a Paul's Scarlet Hawthorn tree, which I bought from an online bonsai nursery. And the tree originally had a trunk, which you can see in here is twisting all the way up to the top here, but then continued further up. And the main issue that the tree had was that it looked fairly ridiculous to be honest with the corkscrewing trunk all the way up so I took an air layer from the top of the tree at this point here the top of the tree is now uh, thriving in its own right but what we have is the remains of the trunk or the remains of the tree and it has in particular this sweeping branch here which uh, makes it look a little bit unconvincing. So I'm now going to ask Xavier how he would deal with this particular tree and then offer my own thoughts on how I would take that forward. I feel like I've been ambushed on this one. I really do. Um, Cause you said you didn't like the corkscrew. Um, I can imagine, I can understand why you might take the top off. I actually like the corkscrew. I think the corkscrew in the lower part of the tree is not so much of a problem in, in as much as what's left. But if you imagine that extending up and continuing up another eight inches or so. I think the first thing that I hate talking about inverse taper because it isn't a big issue and all trees in nature we know have inverse taper. They just have it. Um, but it is the first thing that draws the eye because I'm trying to work out first question I was asked is where's the front um, and what's the root system like yeah. uh, and whether there is a preferred front because that can often help me decide which way I'm going to go with the tree. Because um, I, I can be really honest with you, I actually like the quirkiness of that. And sometimes with the tree, I, I often get comments that some of the things I do aren't quite by the rules. Um, and I've never been a person by the rules. But um, because there's so many of the corkscrews there, I'd be tempted to emphasize that. I might, I might potentially wire it out a little bit further. But I think you definitely, definitely, definitely need to look. This is Tony's pointer, by the way. On the inside of bends, you, know, you can definitely remove some of the clutter so we can actually see what the tree, what the tree is offering yeah. and clear out the inner structure so you can look at what's on the outside. Because I find it sometimes difficult to know. I mean, this needs to come out, have a branch on that, use the existing bends. So this one, continue to grow that out. I think you said early on, actually, sometimes it's a good idea to let them grow. Got yeah, I, th I think sometimes if you're not sure where to go with the tree, just allow it to grow for a, a season or two. See, even here, you've done the cut there. So this branch is absolutely crucial for your healing there. So I would let that one go to town. Mm -hmm. I would let this go out. Um, I mean, seriously, possibly you probably wouldn't keep this. Um, I'd have some sort of end there, but you want that one to really grow long yeah. and heal that. 
clear when well, clear all the clutter out and then see if actually it works with the existing corkscrew design it has corkscrew is that like corkscrew but different um yeah but you need to heal that yeah and anyway that's going to happen is that that grow which means you want the energy going there which means you want to be removing a lot of other places that are sucking that energy first but um it's in a nice basket i like the pond basket I haven't got these, by the way. I really must get some of those. I like those. I've got some spare. I should have brought some with me. <laughs> yeah, it's an interesting tree, but not my favourite. So, my take on this tree is that I really am not a fan of this this drooping branch. And I think Xavier is correct in that there's a lot of foliage in here that needs to come out. So anything that's in sort of elbows on the inside of curves uh, that just needs taking out so you can see what we've actually got to work with and then my immediate thought would be to lose this or at least most of that um, as Xavier says leaving some of it and some of the growth on there to help heal up the scar at the top of the tree that we have there where I made the big cut uh, but then I would be allowing all of this extending growth just to grow out and i think it's one of those where effectively the branches for the tree don't exist at the moment and this, these are the branches so those need to be allowed to extend out and grow and this is where the design of the tree actually lies in the future so it will be a, a nicely sort of domed tree in future with ramification built on branches which are built from these so if i get you right what you're actually saying is your tree starts from up here so in which case is there an argument for just removing everything below where you see branches i'm i'm, I'm quite happy to allow these to extend out as well but i think the crown of the tree is definitely these new shoots here and we lose we lose this odd curving branch i think the the problem is that the original styler of the tree perhaps got a little bit Wire happy. overly zealous with their wiring <laughs> everything was bent down in an unrealistic fashion and there were just too many unrealistic curves in the trunk <laughs> no i think i can see what you're saying i think yeah definitely agree with you on removing from there so I've got here a trident maple, which is grown alongside a big rock in this small pot. And this tree was one which I actually got from the Doncaster bonsai show. And the story is that Alex Braunton, who's a regular commenter on these YouTube videos, actually bought this tree. And I didn't have a trident maple in my collection. I saw this tree and uh, I mentioned that I didn't have a, a trident in my collection and I hadn't actually seen any others around the show. And he said, oh, if you want it, you can have it. Because I've seen another tree that I prefer. <laughs> so so I, t I took this tree off him. Um, I've had it now for perhaps about 10 months. And I've had time to look at the tree to think about its future and what I need to do with it. And I'm just going to get Xavier's take on this before I tell you what my thoughts are. Do you remember when you told me what you thought about my four foot juniper? And how sometimes you should just not buy them? Yeah. Yeah. I remember when you made this, this decision. I don't know, decision. Sometimes we make um, good decisions and sometimes perhaps we get carried away with the moment. I feel like you got carried away with the moment because you saw this lovely rock and it looked like this maple was... was just work its way through and maybe attached to it. The rock is lovely. I do like the rock and that rock will one day make a very good root on rock for another tree. It's perfect for that and hopefully that's what you'll do actually. In fact, I might find you a Chinese elm or, or even a trident maple. The next year you can wind around that rock. But I will do that. I was taken by this tree when I saw it as well. So at the time I remember thinking it was a good deal. But I think Alex has had you over. Not deliberately because Alex is the nicest guy ever. Um, no, what you need to do is salvage it, take the rock away, have a look at what the tree structure is, and then I would be cutting this right back. So you've got, if you look here, you've got three from the same point, but yeah. you've got budding right back there. So I would be initially, we'll be cutting back to the second set, 
on all of these branches and bring it right back here. One, two, three, four. I've got four from the same point. Luckily, that one's already dead, so that's helped you with the decision. Um, that one looks dead actually, so that's helped you with the decision. So actually, you remove this one. You remove this one here, leaving those two. Um, I'd take, well, that's dead anyway. I'd be concentrating these two here. You've also got a nice little bud just there. Yeah. I'd want that to grow because that's dead behind it. I'd probably consider taking basically a lot of the, the live stuff back to base buds here. Um, tried and maple are really good for that. And I can show you, I've got a whole load of maples, tried and maples over there, which are, are fully bloomed up and I will be doing literally the, uh, the hard prune back to primary buds. It's still going to be a great tree, but I'd love to know what the roots are like beneath all that moss. And the only thing I'd say is, have you had a look at the roots underneath it yet? I have. Um, I found that over winter, due to the freezing and thawing, um, I picked the pot up and the rock just basically lifted out of the pot. Uh, there are some circling roots, uh, but it's not looking desperately in need of repotting. But my, my thoughts on this tree are that basically the rock needs to go, the tree needs to be planted in a, a pond basket or something. It needs to be thickened up and grown on quite substantially. In the shallow pot, it's never going to thicken up and develop to its potential. The rock, as Xavier says, would be ideal to plant a tree over. It's a nice rock. It's got some nice fissures in it through which the roots can be grown. But I don't think it's suited for this particular tree. I think you're right, Xavier, in that I was carried away in the moment. <laughs> and you might recall the moment at which I bought this from Alex, I put down on the floor a bag of pots which I had and broke those pots. Yeah. So, uh, um, but I think you're right. I think um, we've got several dead branches up here and I think the focus needs to be on getting that healthy. Plan is to separate the tree and the rock, put the tree into a pond basket or some suitable basket just to help reinvigorate the tree. It's not looking the healthiest. It's got a couple of dead branches on there. And I think once that tree has got a bit more vigor and health, uh, tridents do grow quite vigorously and uh, potentially it could be a nice tree going forward. But I think it, it perhaps needs a little bit more TLC at the moment. And another tree potentially planting over this rock and making use of that. This next tree is a Korean hornbeam that I bought from a commercial bonsai nursery. And I was drawn to the tree because for such a small tree, it has all this lovely ramification and a nicely developed canopy. But with a bit of time and having the opportunity to study the tree, a concern I have is that although it's got lots of ramification, it appears to me that the trunk is not in proportion to the ramification and the canopy. And to me, this appears to be an example of a tree where the trunk wasn't perhaps sufficiently developed before the ramification was. And also, we've got quite a dense uh, mass of branches with lots of branches coming out from similar places. So here, for example, we've got several branches and that is leading to inverse taper in some cases. And although I'm not obsessed about removing inverse taper what i am a little bit more concerned about is trying to thicken up the trunk and trying to make the tree look a bit more proportional okay first thing there are some trees that you buy because they're korean hornbeam or they're trident maple and they have their own characteristic and i'm going to put my hands up right away and say i found them notoriously difficult to develop i've got i've got one which has been on a video before but it's got, I, I recognize the same issues. I had lots of branches like you've said, and the trunk itself didn't seem to match the proportions of the tree. And I took the decision to start removing some of those branches. The tree didn't thrive by taking those branches away. I was worried I did it more harm than good. Um, I actually like this tree. It's odd, quirky. Um, I could see it sitting on the, the sort of the steps of a, a hillside, well, not a hill, <laughs> and a mountain somewhere, and it's grown that way as it's trying to compete for light. 
the only thing that is a concern is yes you could potentially pick one of these branches where there's four coming out and remove one I, I certainly see that happening it's definitely at this mid level because what's clearly happened is that the canopy on top has um, masked out the lower branches and so no light comes through so you've had no budding at all so all the buds are out here so you say you get this lovely great ramification but it's it's not it's not really because it's it's literally the secondary branches coming yeah. out right at the end and all, as you say all the growth is on the tips of all those branches isn't it so you know my, my probably thing i would be very very careful about this but i would be doing the obvious things i'd let it grow until the post flush so definitely the end of may and then i have a look you've got a bud back here mm -hmm. and here so i would just start trying to bring it in a little bit because you've also got latent buds here now they won't activate with these but this year and i would I'll be talking very slowly i would just cut back to, to where you've got buds here and see what reaction you get. And maybe not do it on all the branches, do it just on a few of them just to see how this tree responds and go systematically work your way around and just find where you can see some buds that are there that haven't activated. Have you got the opportunity to just prune further back? But you can't make that decision yet because you need to wait for everything to come out and harden, certainly until it's energy positive, as Tony now likes to say. Quite right, quite right. But yeah, and you want to slowly, slowly bring it in. But, you know, it's a Korean hornbeam, and I'm certainly not an expert on Korean hornbeam. In fact, I'm not an expert at all. So this tree makes me nervous only because I know it's a, it's a, it is a prized tree. I'm less worried about all the branches coming from it. I'm more concerned about obvious things like here, you've got growth going up. You could very carefully wire those out into individual pads so that what you're trying to do get more light into all parts of the tree because um, systematically what happens you'll get longer and longer yep. and the growth won't increase on the inside so it's looking for opportunities to push it back in carefully and gently what are your thoughts on the proportion of the trunk as as it relates to the rest of the tree i i think it's the it's the quirky tree yeah you've got difference in proportions it, it's because the branches come out so far that you see that i think if you can slowly bring some of these these latent buds and get them pushing out and see what happens as i say i'm i'm a lot more careful about what i would say with this one because you know it is it is certainly one of your more um it's already set up and i don't know how old it is but if you do too much with the hornbeam you may end up killing it so i'm i'm also inexperienced with looking after Korean hornbeam. I don't have any real experience of uh, what their growth habit is like. So I think what I will do as a bare minimum, there are areas in the canopy such as here where there are two branches emerging from exactly the same spot on the trunk or on the, the, the primary branch. So I will go through and I will clean out those. Um, I think as well that Internally, there are a number of spots in the tree uh, where there are candidates to be removed. And it's a case of going through and carefully selecting which are the best branches there. Um, some of the branches that remain perhaps just need wiring slightly to then fill any spaces. But I, th I, I think I would agree with you. I think it's a tree because of the state that it's in. Uh, it's fairly well developed already, um, perhaps with a couple of flaws in there. It, it's a case of take that very slowly and see how it responds. And as you say, trimming back the foliage, um, trying to promote some back budding. Um, these internal branches, there's not a lot going on there. This final tree is a Mugo pine, which I've had for about three or four years. And in all that time, it really hasn't done anything. It's got some candles on there, which might be last year's growth. And I can see, in fact, that it's got some new candles developing on there, which is this year's growth. But the problem is that the tree just appears leggy, shapeless, and also there, there are potentially two trees in the pot there. 
Uh, this tree's just been left and it's been a bit neglected. And I'm now thinking I need to do something with that. Yeah, yeah, I can see this is a bit of a problem. Before I go any further, clean all that moss away, get rid of all the moss at all. Yes, you can explore whether or not that's two trunks. I wouldn't be, as you've seen from my recent video, I wouldn't be looking at pulling that out uh, until the uh, late summer, early autumn um, to, to discover. But it could be quite nice as a, as a twin trunk regardless. But you've got all the basic flaws that you have with pine here in terms of you want to be reducing junctions to two branches. So it's got it, for me, it would be why I'd be wiring a lot of the branches anyway, but you need to have an idea of where the structure's going. So getting rid of all that moss first, to make sure you're not getting rotting going on. Let's just give you an idea of what's, sorry, I can't help it. Let's just see what base you've got down there. It could, it could well be two trees actually but they've been growing together like that, so take advantage of it. So that branch there is growing in and over. If you're gonna be wiring, you've gotta think how you're gonna wire it out. So I would probably remove that one because it's already inwards. And then look at that out. You've got this one here. Um, that's quite a long length with nothing in between, whereas that one has actually got needle there and you're potentially going to get new shoots from a uh, new needles from there and uh, not new, a new candle from there hopefully so i'd probably remove that one put wire on those um you've got two there that's fine you've just got the one there and even if you look at the ends um there's two new candles so that's fine for now so they're not particularly overextended yet so that's not a problem. On each of those, it's quite long growth. So again, wiring them, you might wire some nice, interesting bends into them. But even here, the candles aren't that long yet. I'd, I'd probably have a look in another couple of weeks and it may well take the tops off both of those. Because what you do want to happen is energy to go into that one. And it will, if you, you could actually nip that in half and that one in half and reduce the candles on that um, you're probably going to get something down here as well so yeah so I would probably that looks to be the branch I would remove and work on those two uh, if those candles get any longer reduce them by a half probably you've also got I can see it in there there's a bud there I can't see it being any use. Um, you're going to remove that. Oh, truthfully, I've probably removed the butt actually. And then this way you go around this one. It too, again, suffers the same problem is that you've got one, two branches coming from it. So you need to decide the orientation of this tree. So if that's going to be wired out like that, and that's going to be an outer branch so you keep that one and get rid of that one unless you decide to do the other thing which is wiring out that way so it's about your wiring decisions to how you want the shape yeah. and we each everyone has different ideas on where they see the, the branch going but before you put the wire on you need to decide which of those go i would i would get rid of that one and then that probably makes you and then that middle one and then you you've got these ones yeah. And then this is a great big leggy thing. Follow the same principle all the way around. It's actually, with some wire on it, could be a really, really interesting tree. The thing about the Mugo is you deal with it slowly. Yeah. So my primary thing is get rid of all the moss, have a look what's there, and then just pick which branches you'd remove. To me, this tree has always been a bit featureless and a bit of a non-entity really as a tree. And problems for me are things like this long, extended bit here with no buds nothing on there and whether or not i can get something to come out from there um, i also believe that that is without doubt two trees in the pot and so my thoughts are at the appropriate time of year which will be i guess late summer take those out repot them separately and then start dealing with them as two separate trees at that point. And I agree with Xavier, 
Um, I think you've got more experience with these trees than I have. Um, selecting which branches and which of the, the secondary branches are keeping on there. Uh, but then what I intend to do is get a significant amount of wire on there and start shaping these quite significantly. So you've got crazy tighter bends in there and just try and bring the tree, shrink it down effectively into a smaller, more compact space. And I've seen some examples of some trees, mugo pines, that were relatively young trees on eBay where the seller has put some wire on them and they'd look like really interesting. And let's see if the tree can redeem itself. Get the moss off it. So those are the, the four trees that we've had a look at and offered our different opinions on how we take those forward. Would you do anything differently with those trees? Leave a, a comment and let us know what you think. I don't think it's fair that you've put me on the spot for so many trees. So I've actually got a, a tree that I really struggle to know what to do with. I had suggestions last year, and this is an old Katsura maple that I got back in 2015 and was six foot tall. Took loads of air layers off it and it's now this high. The big issue I've got is obvious. It's got some weird handlebar type branches up there, but that's not what really concerns me. It's a little bit lower down. What would you do with this? Just looking at the tree and offering my initial thoughts, it's got some odd sharp direction of branches so for example in here the trunk comes up and the branch goes off at it's not quite a 90 degree angle but it looks a little bit awkward and similarly up here you've got the trunk comes up and then you've got this branch that droops down you've also got the tree growing over a rock and quite dark roots and bark down here. One thought is that the rock that that sat on looks out of proportion. It looks like it, it's, it's not a root over rock, it's root over pebble. Is that appropriate now? Uh, does it need to be sat onto a different rock? Is that even a practical possibility? I'm not sure there's an awful lot you can do about some of these branches further up coming out at odd angles because if you were to remove these, you know, losing all the foliage i think the best you can hope for is that with foliage on there and perhaps positioning some of this growth you might cover some of those up and mask them what about the actual I'd, trunk itself at uh, the base yeah i mean it's discolored and i have on the little katsura that i've got i've got a couple of roots on the bottom that are sort of black and I think some of those had actually rotted but these these seem fairly solid. Would you consider um, air layering it? I think the problem you've got is that if you were to try air layering uh, potentially you could air layer it to get rid of that bottom part of the tree. What about if you, if you lift that up for us I'm thinking I don't know what your thoughts are an air layer that goes across there so you turn it potentially into a twin trunk or a clump mm -hmm. and get rid of all that bottom horrible root. It worries me. That's why I'm, I'm wondering. I, I ask lots of people about this because that seems to be a almost a Hail Mary, but it works. Then you could bring a lot of the tree down as well. I actually like a lot of the unique branching on it, but that is the bit I really, really struggle with. How valuable is this tree to you? How upset would you be if the air layer failed? Yeah. Because the problem is a technique like that, there is always the possibility you're doing something quite drastic to the tree. There's the possibility that, yeah, it doesn't take. It's a tough one. I haven't, I've been thinking about it for years and years and years. And I've still not done it because there is a sentimental value to it.
uh, while I'm here hiding behind the juniper branch, I've given all this rubbish advice, but I'm actually asking for some big advice about what I think looks like some bird has, has, has done something on these juniper branches. I've got absolutely no idea what it is. And I thought on the off chance, you might actually know something about this, Jason, because I don't. Now, I, I've seen this before. I've got a small juniper that had this on it. And this is actually apple cedar rust. And it's a fungal infection on the tree. And it passes from junipers typically to apple trees and back from season to season. Um, I understand uh, that it's easier to treat once it's on the apple tree than it is on the juniper tree. But it's a, it's a fungal growth which is within the branch and this is the, the fruiting body of it. And uh, it puts out spores and that will spread to apple trees. And then next year from the apple trees that will come back to the junipers. And I think what you need to do is get rid of that stuff. It looks like chewed up peach or chewed up fruit that somebody spat out onto the, the tree. And the tree that I had, I jet washed it off. And then I think later in the year, what happened was I got like hard, dark nodules growing out of the branch at that point, And that was the fungus coming out again so it has a number of different sort of stages in its lifestyle i'm not an expert in it by any means but i think what you need to do is get some kind of fungal treatment onto there and what i had to do is the branch that was affected on my tree i actually cut that off because there is the danger that that's going to spread to one other, of the other trees junipers. and this is a close-up of what that looks like in this current state and i think when it first comes out from the branch it's a very bright orange color so I hope you enjoyed watching that. If so, please hit the like and subscribe. So from Jason at the bottom of the garden. And from uh, Xavier at the patio end of the garden. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.